We're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech, American Issues, Take One. Um, and we're going to discuss today what is going on uh, with Trump and the documents and the indictment and how all of that affects, you know, the other issues on the table. OK, and for this discussion, we have our regular contributor, Cynthia Sinclair, and our special contributor, contributor Manfred uh, Henningsen. Um, and we'll be right back in a moment. Okay, um, welcome you guys. Uh, Cynthia, I know you're loaded. You have researched this. <laughs> you have looked at everything that could relate. And we are going to, we're going to find, uh, what was your term, Manfred? We're going to find some beef on this bone. Manfred Henningsen, uh, Emeritus of Political Science, UH Manoa. He was there since 1912. Uh, Manfred, thank you for coming to the show. Cynthia, I am so interested in what you have to say. All right. So, you know, the ultimate question, and we wrote it out as the title of the show. Um, let's look at it. How do the Biden documents, classified documents, change things? Um, are they meaningful with regard to the Trump documents? Well, if you want me to go first, um, I'll tell you this morning, I was listening to the political affairs uh, C-SPAN where they take people's opinion, they take, you know, Republicans, Democrats, and, and independents, and people get to just come, just regular people get to come on and say what they think. And it was a stark uh, warning, if you may, um, at, at, at what exactly is happening with the polarization of our news cycles. And every single Every single person, almost 201, had said that they thought that an investigation into Biden was good. They, it should happen for different reasons, of course, across the board from the Democrats think it's good just to show that he's not really guilty of any crime and, and to show the differences between the two, the Trump documents and, and his. And then the Republicans on the opposite extreme who think that Trump did nothing wrong because he was the president when he got them. And the only person that has committed a crime is Biden. So that, you know, the polarities are just ridiculous. And the independents were sort of split down the middle. One thing that surprised me, and that is there's, there's like five Democrats, five Republicans and five independents that are questioned, okay? Well, out of the Democrats, three of them think that um, one of the posts on Truth Social that Truth that Trump did, um, saying that he's got dirt on everybody, they're convinced that they've been planted by the Secret Service or somebody. There were two independents that felt the same way. And I thought that was interesting. And if, when we think back to the beginning of all this, when we were asking, what's Trump going to do with them? Why does he want them? And often it was mused that he's going to use them as ways to get back at his opponents. And who knows if that's true, but according to his own words on one of his posts, he's got dirt on, he's got info on everybody. So it's just an interesting um, stark difference that we're looking at here as far as we know that Trump resisted every single minute. He tried to keep them. He told his lawyers to make a written statement to the FBI saying they'd given back everything. And then the FBI went out and found hundreds more. Then we can compare that to Biden, who found a handful, a handful, 12 so far is what we're being told, um, and instantly, immediately gave them to the um, archives and alerted the DOJ. So the differences are just ridiculous even to try to compare the two. But of course, we know that all this whataboutism that's going to be coming from the, the right. And I listened to Fox News. I forced myself through it for about I tried to tune in on each one of the shows, the three big ones, Laura Ingram, Hannity, and, and you know, that 
crazy Tucker Carlson. And all of them are crying from the rooftop, poor Trump, and how bad Biden is, and how criminal Biden is, and, and trying to give cover to Trump. And I think, gosh, and how do they not choke on the hypocrisy of what they try to present? And of course, I have more, but I'll use that as my time for now. So, Manfred, you know, the hypocrisy is nothing new to the GOP. Attacking Biden is nothing new. They would do it whatever the circumstances. They want to undermine his administration in every way. They want to undermine his candidacy for 2024 in every way. So the question is, you know, how real a threat is this, um, the, the dance of the competing documents? Um, does it change the calculus? And in what way? inside and outside? Well, I think for Biden, it's simply a, a, an image problem. It's not a substance uh, problem, whereas in Trump's case, you know, he is full of dirt all over. I mean, there is no space in his image that is not touched by dirt. So for that reason, uh, whatever the Republicans uh, want to, to do, uh, it will that will not work. I mean, what I find uh, so amazing is the sloppiness of uh, this document, this document ma management by the Biden staff. I will not even blame him, but uh, the staff. I mean, we are talking about documents that uh, go back to the Obama uh, when he was vice president uh, under Obama. So it's uh, uh, I, I simply do not understand that there was no alert popping uh, popping up uh, in the Bi the Biden circle before he became president. Uh, after he left the vice presidency, that they did not check uh, whatever he may have had. I'm the sloppiness and the messiness of that management. Uh, I think uh, may be more damaging to the image of Biden than what these documents uh, uh, represent. I mean, Cynthia is right, you know, you cannot compare them, uh, the, the two sets of uh, documents. But it's the image. Yeah, issue. well, you were talking before the show about the Paul Krugman article uh, stating a certain you know, yeah, no, that is that is you know, from for me it was very very surprising when I read that uh, article in the New York Times yesterday. There's no mentioning of that whatsoever. Uh, for Paul Krugman, you know, the Nobel uh, economics uh, professor, uh, sees uh, what was the headline? Will it be morning in Joe Biden's America? Uh, question mark. And he says yes. Uh, he says, uh, you know, nobody will be able of touching the the record, the economic record, the lack of a recession, you know, inflation going down, uh, the consumer confidence at uh, in, at, at a high. Uh, but there's one point that he makes, which I think is accurate. He says, even... Uh, well, he doesn't say even if all of it's true. He thinks his predictions are true. But even if this is the reality, 47% of the American uh, population uh, will not believe it and uh, consider the, the notion that America is uh, really in a mess. Now, that is a political reality. And Cynthia referred to that, you know, when she was commenting on what she saw today on one of the talk shows. Uh, America is divided. And this division, you cannot somehow uh, rationally understand. It's, it's, it, it, it has nothing to do with uh, reality. Yes, yeah, so let, me, let me stop you with, right there, because I think that you know, the elephant in the room is the press. Um, when when the whole uh, Trump thing started, you know, the press saw it as raw meat, went after him, you know, all these guru types were saying, oh, this is much more important than the insurrection. 
an indictment here would be easier than an indictment on the insurrection. Um, that's what Merrick Garland should be focusing on. He should get his indictment. Well, he didn't do it, and Jack Smith didn't do it yet. I'm still waiting. I have this vision of a metronome every day from one side to the other, no indictment on anything. Um, so, you know, this is, this is troubling. The other thing I want to mention is that when, when Snowden, um, you know, did his um, trick and uh, leaked all these uh, highly classified documents, um, it came out that 1.5 million people in this country have top secret clearances. Uh, we can quibble about it's 1.4, 1.5, but it's millions. But when I was in the service, I didn't know anybody who had a top secret clearance, and I certainly didn't. Um, so all of a sudden now, everybody's got a type, top secret clearance. It was a piece of the paper is that people in the Department of Commerce have top secret clearances. What's going on? And when you have 1.5 million people holding top, top secret clearances, you'll you know, it's not that hard to find a Snowden who will leak it. Um, and the press hasn't really focused on that. You know, this is a systemic problem. It's not only Trump and it's not only Biden. As the government has been, um, you know, missing in action on controlling classification and declassification of secret documents. It didn't focus on that. So now we have Biden. Um, you know, found with uh, secret documents. And for the moment, you know, I, let me say, Cynthia, I don't think there's any hard evidence to suggest some sort of planting conspiratorial possibilities. You know, and we may, may, we may have different thoughts about that, but, you know, bottom line is, um, he, you know, he made a mistake or his staff made a mistake. It's now the press is running around like a banshee um, attacking, attacking Biden, or at least respecting the GOP attack on Biden. It's the old question of what's the raw meat flavor of the week? Um, and, you know, what distraction will we be fascinated with this week? Uh, and, you know, and it, it largely results from two factors. One is that people don't know the difference. They don't know what it is, a top secret clearance. They don't know what should be happening with classified documents. And the other is you always have these two madcap polar news sources. One is the Democrats looking for raw meat and spending all day, you know, making it a big deal, even when the insurrection is a much bigger deal. Uh, and then you have Tucker Carlson lying to us, and half the country believes his lies. Is it any wonder that the country is confused? Is it any wonder, uh, you know, that the reality is um, escaping the national consciousness. So I ask you again, um, what does this mean in terms of its implication uh, long term? You can argue the merits. Is it really a distraction or not? But what does it mean in real politics, Cynthia? Well, this is the thing that it seems like most of the mainstream media, not the right wing crazies, but the main, but even all of them are sort of doing this. They're making it about the classification process instead of everything. They're saying, oh, well, everything's more classified than it should be, which to me muddies all of the water to make it so what they don't want Biden's to be quite so bad. But in the process, they're going to undermine what Trump has done. The difference here is that Trump is not so much being um, investigated by Jack Smith about the documents themselves as much as the fact that he harbored them. He didn't give them back. He lied about saying he gave them back when he didn't and all of that stuff. So as far as him being charged, documents, you know, aren't really- Do you think he will be indicted? Trump I do. Be indicted. I, I actually do think he will be. I and, don't, and if he goes to court, he's going to trot this um, what about defense out, okay. isn't he? Absolutely. I don't think it's going to be a big and anything much more than a slap on the wrist, to be honest. If you know, we think about great, he's going to be indicted. Maybe he'll get thrown in jail. It's never going to go. Did to jail. you agree with me that the, the documents is a kind of teapot issue compared to the insurrection? Oh, gosh, yes, absolutely. A hundred percent. And and 
even a teapot issue compared to just the telephone call alone to Georgia, to, you know, Raffensperger, when he said, I just need you to find 11,780 votes. So I think that he's on tape and hopefully Fannie Willis, who has already seated a regular grand jury now um, and is moving forward, I've always felt like that's the number one uh, best case to go after him for. No, it hasn't happened yet. And furthermore, if you look at the distraction uh, side of this, you find that Marjorie Taylor Greene um, is trying to clean up her act. And, you know, and the press is focusing on uh, Kevin McCarthy and Marjorie Taylor Greene and her friends. Um, and, and they're making news. And it isn't only negative news. Uh, and then Joe Biden comes out and he says, I'm going to try to work with McCarthy, even though, you know, McCarthy has. I would not, frankly, I just have to admit, I would not have a beer with McCarthy. Not even. Well, look, it's very way. fascinating to listen to the two of you. Uh, in a way, you are reinforcing what you are criticizing. Yes. You're talking about nothing else uh, but this story that in the rest of the world is considered to be a freak show. You know, American politics has become absolutely a joke. Uh, when I'm reading, you know, the European press, it's all commenting on what is happening in the United States. They do not understand uh, how much the serious perspective got lost. I mean, it's almost as bad as the English press, you know, where you have the freak show surrounding uh, Prince Harry and his memoirs. So uh, both Anglo, the Anglo-American societies are not talking about the reality that we are confronted with. I mean, the, in a way you could say, sometimes we are pulled back into the real world through the Ukraine. Uh, and, uh, you know, what is happening there, the absolute mess uh, that Putin has created for himself. And then you come China with Xi Jinping, you know, we have riots in, in uh, Chinese cities uh, at this point. So, I mean, this somewhat, uh, this, the self-centered naval show that uh, you are supporting, you know, by talking about nothing but this really uh, uninteresting issue, you know, of the Biden uh, documents. I, I find it uh, disturbing. It's a tempest and a teapot issue. Yes, yes and, it and, is. Uh, you know, and the thing is that, you know, you have to shake it and bake it. And we three are going to find out what the real state of the world is, right, Cynthia? Yes, please, and I have a question um, for, for Manfred. Um, as the resident expert right now here, how do we get to the truth? How do we boil down all of that stuff and, and get to the truth of it? Because that's where it, it's frustrating for people that are trying to get to the truth of it, but get loop, looped into that whole um, my side or your side thing like truth you. of what truth of what of that well, tension of this division well the the truth of of items that are happening like this like the, 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 the truth of our condition our global condition and well, our not global future. American condition American condition more it's so American, it's the American condition it's not global right. the madness of uh, of American politics is uh, you know is not the the a globe the global madness i mean in a way you could say the global madness has become uh, enforced or uh, supported by the american madness you would always think you know this is uh, the place of stability uh, where madness does not uh, play a role but now it's america which is really uh, in deep kimchi so I have a, my back to my question of how do we boil all this partisan nonsense back down to the facts and the truth of things? It seems that everything in truth has been devolved into opinion. How do we get out of the opinion and back to the truth? That, I guess, is my main question. Well, 
I, I mean, <laughs> Jay last time uh, said, you know, we need a major uh, crisis, you know, and he went, uh, I think, to the extreme when he uh, talked about this crisis that America needs. Uh, I don't, I mean, when I'm reading Paul Krugman, I think it's not the economic situation that will lead us uh, to this um, confrontation. And I do not think there's anyone who will invade uh, the United States. Now, the crisis could come if Putin will use uh, nuclear weapons. The crisis could come if Xi Jinping decides, you know, they are going to invade Taiwan. I still don't believe that he is as stupid as Putin. But nevertheless, things like that could trigger this uh, reconnection with reality. So, so what do you mean? So, I mean, I, I have a vision from what you say, Manfred, of uh, FDR standing in front of Congress on um, December 8th and calling for war and bringing Congress together, unified on that issue. Uh, that's not going to happen, is it? Is, do you see that possibility where some leader stands in front of Congress and says, OK, we're in crisis. Um, we have to get together on things. You think that will happen? Well, that will certainly happen. But whether that will change the situation that Cynthia is talking about uh, completely, I don't know. Uh, remember, there were even after uh, FDR's speech on December 8th, 1941, there were still a lot of people uh, in the U.S. who were against uh, the U.S. entering the war. Now, the the Nazi, the Germans and uh, the Japanese helped uh, FDR when they declared war on the United States uh, on the 9th or the 10th of December, you know, after Pearl Harbor. So in that sense, uh, he had the support of Hitler and Hirohito uh, when he made that declaration of war. It was not a one-sided declaration on part of FDR. Uh, now, I don't know what will, look, an invasion of Taiwan is not the same as Pearl Harbor. Uh, the use of nuclear weapons in Ukraine would be, I think, uh, something that uh, will invoke NATO uh, activities, and that could lead to some sobering. It's interesting that th those two examples you've given are external and yes. certainly they're international. But, but what, I... about, what about another violent insurrection? Uh, what about other, you know, broad violence, widespread violence in this country? We have that risk. Um, what about the collapse of the government? Hey, you know, what about the, uh, the, the, the failure to change the debt ceiling? Uh, what about that? You know, these things are internal. Yes, but look, we, we have not talked about the debt ceiling we, that may come in June or August. Uh, I don't know at what time, but I think at that moment, you will have maybe the reconfiguration of the old Republican Party in Congress. And they will start a fight, you know, with uh, the insurrectionist wing. Uh, of the party. It may lead, you know, to the, that would finally lead to the division of the Republican Party in two, two parties. But I, look, I, I'm not in the business of speculation. I, at this point, I do not believe that they will go as far as uh, not taking care of the, the debt limit. No, well, hopefully, but uh, yeah, Cynthia, you know, this is interesting how the conversation has gone. We started asking about, um, you know, how the Biden documents change things. And in a way, uh, they're a small factor. It's they're small. The, the, it's very small. Put it yes. In perspective, there are so many other threats and problems the right. country faces internally and externally. Right. That we really have to look at the, at the larger, the comprehensive, uh, you know, environment in which this is all happening. You had something, Cynthia? Um, if I may, I something that I heard repeatedly when I was listening to Fox News is they think or they are saying 
<laughs> anyway, that they think Biden's going to send soldiers to Ukraine to take the heat off of himself. For it. So it's already being talked about and all this crazy, as you like to say, Michigas is happening over there on the side of the right. They're already starting to come up with these crazy stories about what Biden's going to do and how if there's any kind of acceleration in Ukraine, it's going to be because Biden is what they were saying on the news is because Biden wants to take is going to create something over there so that he can get out of all the trouble he's in. Well, that's standard GOP. You know, you you, you attack somebody for doing what you yourself would do. But, um, you know, Manfred, we have the this impeachment um, of Homeland Security, the, the uh, leader of Homeland Security. That's really going to happen, I think. And there's going to be an investigation of Hunter Biden. And uh, the House is going to be occupied with all kinds. I mean, talk about distractions. This doesn't look good. I don't know how Paul Krugman, you know, can come to come to an, uh, an optimistic point of view, because Congress is not only dysfunctional, but Congress is one huge plethora of distraction. How can we make public policy and solve national problems? Um, do you agree with Krugman about this? Because it's, it's, we're on the cusp of distractions as such we have never seen before, all irrational. I was surprised when I read it. Uh, I was uh, absolutely, in, in a way, I was stunned uh, that he could make this uh, prediction. Uh, well, it was not a prediction, but his assessment of the American economic situation at this point and his praise of the Biden administration. Especially, you know, I'm still reading the January uh, 6th report by the uh, com commission, you know, Adam Schiff is the main uh, author or uh, editor. And when you read that, you know, I've been through of the 800 pages, uh, I have maybe managed to read 400 of them. And it's uh, a horror story. I mean, confirming what you just alluded to, the dysfunctionality of uh, Congress. Yes, it's a dysfunctionality of Congress that becomes manifest in this report. But on the other hand, you have also to see that this report is a success story of Congress as well. Uh, I mean, what you have here is a documentation, you know, of uh, an insurrection that was not successful. Now, whether this report will prevent further insurrections. You seem to indicate, you know, the possibility of others to follow. I think uh, this report being out there and reading it uh, will be help to prevent that from happening. Because uh, when you when you read this these detailed interviews, you know, and uh, I mean the footnotes are s stunning uh, as well. When you read that, you know, you it's a horror story uh, of an institutional system that uh, was close to collapse, but then saved itself by. You know, I yeah, I think they wanted to make that point. They wrote it up with that specific thing in yes, mind. They right. wanted somebody like you to read it and find it a horror story. And um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Avi Melber is writing or said he was writing a book about the same thing, interpreting the report. So, you know, what we have is a horror story. But yes. the, probably the most horrible thing is that this was intended to inform uh, the Department of Justice and Jack Smith. And Jack Smith has been in office six weeks, and it's crickets. Um, we get little pieces of news out of that, but we don't have an indictment. And it is the most important thing. So let me ask you, Cynthia, would an indictment change the calculus? You know, I'm not sure that um, this thing with Mar-a-Lago versus uh, you know, Biden's documents changes the calculus all that much. It's going to be a who shot John, you know, what about kind of proceeding. 
Um, but what about insurrection? What, what about a, an indictment over the insurrection at the top levels, at the Trump levels? How would that change the calculus? I know we're not supposed to speculate. You know, Manfred said that. But I, I, like, I like your thought. Go ahead and speculate. Go ahead. You're good I'll at that. You, instead of speculating, what I'll do is I'll use an analogy. As a mom, if my kids did something wrong and I did not punish them and there was no consequences, they would do it again. And it would get worse. Every time it would get worse and worse. Okay. If they got caught right off the bat and they had some kind of quick, you know, accountability, they stopped doing it. That is how everyone, that's how we operate, right? So by not having any kind of consequences to what happened on January 6th, every person that was involved, every person that thought it was an okay thing is emboldened. And they are, you know, thinking that, yes, it was an okay thing. Look, there's been no trouble. So obviously, if there's no accountability, then we are asking for it to happen again. Whether I will make a speculation as to whether or not it will, um, I think we're setting ourselves up to make it happen again if we don't do something right away. And but so since the sooner we have accountability, the better. Go ahead, Manfred. You have the accountability. This fat volume, you know, uh, is an extraordinary uh, document yes. of how to uh, really uh, record this insurrection. I mean, this is uh, an extraordinary uh, historical document, not only for the US Congress and the United States, but you know, globally, it's a stunning uh, document. But you have also the sentencing of a lot of people who participated in the insurrection. They have gone to prison. So uh, the warning that, no, 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 no. I mean, they have long prison terms, uh, some of them. And uh, I mean, all of these organizations, you know, that were involved in that uh, QAnon, the Proud Boys, uh, and all of these other idiots, uh, they are now, uh, you know, registered publicly. So people know about it now. Whether an indictment of Trump will be the culmination of all of this, I don't know. I think the culmination of all of this is uh, where the midterms, and uh, he, you know that he did not get the red uh, wave, you know, in the House. Uh, he wanted to get the Senate majority, and he didn't get that. Uh, and I do not think he will become president in 2024. Whether Biden is running now or somebody else doesn't matter. Uh, I think he has lost it. And I think, uh, I mean, he has lost this opportunity. I do not think that not only this report, but everything that is connected with it and the, you know, somehow the, the legal, uh, processing of the insurrection that we have been witnessing and will continue. I think that has educated part of this constituency that continue to believe in the big lie. Well, you so, know, you have McCarthy, who is a Trump fan, Margaret right. Taylor Greene, a Trump fan, the Freedom Caucus, largely a a Trump no, no, I, yes, you're and, right. And he still has influence there somehow. Whether you know he comes out and, and makes uh, you know speeches or tweets about it, uh, that, you know the fact all these people are associated with him. Furthermore, you know of the what was it, 147 people who voted against the electoral college right. um, on on January. They 6th. are now members of Congress. Yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so we 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 have the you know the uh, the inmates in the asylum. Um, and, you know, they're playing out, uh, you know, a, a series of steps that would be that are going to be very disruptive. So my, I guess my question, Cynthia, is Trump down or is he out? We know he's lost some influence, at least in you know, the public eye, but he's, he's still there somehow. Um, what's the likelihood of him staging a comeback? I feel that. 
um, the report, while it is immense, and I have hardly been able to get through very much of it, um, but having watched all of the hearings and all of that stuff, and it was great, and it was very consequential and very thorough, but if there's no um, outcome from it, it's just a book. It's just a story that everyone on the right doesn't believe. And they're already, we know Jim Jordan is already going to investigate the committee and the investigation. The weaponization. Weaponization of it. And until Trump gets indicted, until there is an actual legal charge, I don't think that the report is enough because they've already dismissed it as just the Democrats doing it anyway. And the rhinos, the two rhinos. You know, that's how they, I watch the Fox News every once in a while just to hear what they're saying. And that's what they think. And that's what they're saying. And now it's not just the, um, you know, the crazy people that are in the asylum. They're running the asylum now. And so we've got these, as we see the- well, Part of the asylum. Yes. The <laughs> president of the asylum is still, you know, part of it. I mean, Dad Biden in the White House and the Senate isn't either. So you have the, one chamber of the asylum that is sane. Right. And the other is part of the asylum is, is uh, divided. I mean, when, when you saw, you know, the speech by the new leader of the Democrats, minority leader, uh, Jeffrey, I mean, that was, I, I always, when I heard it, I said, this is a declaration of war. And it was absolutely remarkable. You know, Pelosi could not have given a better speech uh, than, than he did, you know. Uh, so for that reason, uh, you have, you have this resistance, and uh, I do not think the publication of this volume is, uh, you know, a political. Yeah, it is a political uh, phenomenon, uh, which uh, really uh, tells you something about the the, the sanity of uh, the house, uh, at least part of the house, the half of the house. Uh, and I think this document will be used. You know, you, I cannot think of any other uh, legislature in the world, you know, that has done something like it. Uh, whatever you may think of the United States at this point, and, you know, the world does not look with great admiration to it. You know, they think American politics has become a freak show. Um, and, uh, well, I mean, there are other countries, Great Britain, you know, during the Harry and Meghan uh, story has become a freak show also. Uh, we don't see that as much uh, because Harry and, and Meghan are not uh, treated uh, the same way in this country by the press or by the public as they are in Great Britain. But, uh, I mean, both countries are in political trouble. I mean, in England, it started with Brexit, and that has still not become uh, resolved. You know, the, the problems well, with Northern Man Ireland. Uh, Manfred, so we're almost reason. out of time, so I want to ask you to um, put it all together in, a, in your uh, closing remarks. We've kind of come to the conclusion that the documents, uh, Miralago and, and Biden documents, are really not that important in, in the larger scheme of things and that we should evaluate the larger scheme of things and, and find you know, ways to improve it, find, find uh, the canary in the coal mine, if you will. My personal view of that is uh, American support for you know, Ukraine is the canary in the coal mine. But anyway, I, I like your thoughts about where, where, where all this goes, what does it mean to us and our future as, um, as Americans? Since here you go first. Oh no, I I want to hear what you have to say first. <laughs> well, I, I agree with uh, I agree, agree with Jay because he has come down, you know, from this high platform he was on before. Uh, so for that reason, I absolutely think that's what uh, has, and I think it will happen. Now, whatever 
you may think of Paul Krugman's um, editorial, which you can read tomorrow, I'm sure, in the local newspaper. Uh, one, I mean, I was stunned that the political dimension, you know, of the crisis that we have been talking about didn't enter his assessment. Now, whether that is, as uh, Jay seemed to indicate, a, a failure of his thinking, or whether he is right, well, I don't know. I cannot make up my mind about it. I find it. I found it stunning. But well, uh, <clears throat> I think you are right when you say it is not. I mean, the the document issue will not uh, define American politics for a long time. Uh, I think um, America has sobered up to some extent, and the midterms were a good indication of that. They surprised me. And I think this kind of sobriety, political sobriety, that was shown by the American people during with the midterms will continue. Now, whether Biden will be the candidate uh, or not, I don't know. I mean, at this point, I think uh, the documents uh, may not be as important as I initially thought. They are an image problem, but uh, his performance, you know, in, in other areas, in the econo economy, the Ukraine issue, the way he treats Putin, and the way he treats Xi Jinping, uh, I think will be more important than anything else. And the GOP majority in the GOP will recognize that also. Yeah, I, I like to add a thought to that is that, um, you know, I think we're, we're kind of suffocating. Um, we have all these national issues, social issues, justice issues. Um, we ha we need a government that is functioning. Instead of having a government that is functioning, we're suffocating for the lack of, uh, you know, the, the lack of response to national problems. This is very serious, and um, it's going to continue. Uh, and and we'll have, you know, that we're suffocating to the point where um, it's going to become a crisis on one thing or another for the lack of congressional action, for the lack of a responsive, uh, you know, decision-making by the Supreme Court, and for the lack of power by Joe Biden. So, uh, you know, I think that that becomes a crisis when all of a sudden you're out of air, when the suffocation becomes almost complete, and you're gasping, and there's no public policy to help you. I don't know what happens. Anyway, sorry, Cynthia, your, your thoughts. No need. Sorry, I completely agree with you. And, and it is the perfect lead into what I'd like to say as my last thing. And that is, I lay this at the feet of the media. Right now, the media is very responsible as they chase after this thing and that thing and this shiny object over here and that shiny object over there. And they spend all day on this document thing instead of talking about some of these other things that are so important also and and it is the media that is behind all this polarization stuff too um choose your side one side or the other it seems that even the media has devolved from looking for the facts and the truth of things and devolved into opinion and and that has has bled out into the public sphere also so that it's hard to find the truth or to find the facts or to find the important issues because we're always following the media off down some, you know, um, shiny object trail. And so what I'd like to see is them to stop doing that. And to, that I think this 24 hour news cycle thing does not help. And I'm not sure what can be done about it but I, I do think that the media has a very big part to play in all of this. Well, I hope you guys will be game because I think uh, next week, what I'd like to suggest for a continued discussion here is the 122 pages uh, of the staffer report on social media that did not get attached um, to the, what was it, 845 page report from the select committee and why and how important is that? And where does it fit in the larger picture? And how serious is social media? Uh, so don't, don't respond today, but 
the guys are willing, I, I can schedule that for next week. At well, this time. You, you, you give us the, the report? Uh, if I can find it, I will, Manfred. Okay, very good. Thank you very much, both you guys, uh, Cynthia Sinclair, Manfred uh, Henningsen. It's been a great discussion. And you know, these discussions are always amazing because you never know where they're going to go. That's true. <laughs> Aloha. <laughs>